Good morning. I am Professor Biju Balakrishnan, working with SIS GST Nehrul Navi Mumbai. The topic I am going to explain today is correlative coding, that is also known as duo binary coding or partial response signaling coding. So maybe one more name can be written, it's a dicode, that's a short form of duo binary code. According to Nyquist theorem, for transmission of FB bits per second, FB by 2 hertz bandwidth is needed. That's called Nyquist bandwidth. Meaning of that is, for transmitting 100 bits per second, 50 hertz bandwidth is needed. That's a Nyquist bandwidth. But for the realization of this, Nyquist filter is needed. And Nyquist filter is a rectangular filter. That's a sharp cutoff filter. It is not realizable. So the meaning of that is, practically, FB bits cannot be transmitted with a bandwidth of FB by 2 hertz with the help of Nyquist filter. Otherwise, according to Nyquist theorem, FB bits can be transmitted per second without any ISI with a bandwidth of FB by 2 hertz. That is Nyquist's first criterion. But practically, uh, the difficulty for realizing Nyquist filter, okay, we should go for some practically realizable filter. That is why normally for transmission of FB bits per second, FB hertz bandwidth is needed. And that is a practically FB hertz bandwidth is required for FB bits transmission. So uh, th this can be implemented with the help of some cosine filter. That's a practically realizable filter. So practically always more than FB by 2 hertz bandwidth is needed. But using a technique known as correlative coding, FB bits can be transmitted per second with a negligible ISA with a bandwidth of FB by 2 hertz. So that's, that's an indication the Nyquist bandwidth can be practically realized using correlative coding. So using correlative coding, binary rate can be doubled without correlative coding for transmitting FB bits per second, FB hertz bandwidth is needed. But with the help of correlative coding, FB bits can be transmitted per second with a bandwidth of FB by 2 hertz. So meaning of that is, for a given communication channel, double bit rate can be achieved. That is why correlative coding is also known as duo binary code. So that's the second name of a correlative code. And I'll explain what is the reason the code is known as correlative code. That's the encoding system. That's the duo binary code generation system. Input is BK. And the delayed signal, that is the duration of one bit, is TB second. That is written delay TB. So the delayed signal is written as BK minus 1. So the present bit and the previous bit. BK is a present input bit. BK minus 1 is a previous input bit. And these two bits, surely that should be represented in terms of pulses. Or that means it should be represented in terms of voltage level. And these voltages are going to be added using an adder. And output is known as CK. That is why the equation for dual binary encode is written here. CK is equal to BK plus BK minus 1. That is present pulse plus previous pulse. And these two pulses are going to be added. And uh, uh, examples of this addition is, if the inputs are 1 and 1, output will be 2. If the inputs are minus 1 and minus 1, output will be minus 2. If the input is 1 and minus 1, output will be 0. So due to that input format, that is non return to zero polar format, output voltages are plus minus 2 volt or 0 volt. If the inputs are different, then output will be zero voltage. And if the inputs are same polarity, output will be plus two voltage or minus two voltage. This is CK. This CK is passing through a Nyquist filter with a bandwidth of FB by two hertz. It's a, a rectangular filter with a sharp cutoff. Initially I said it is not realizable. And later we can prove that this Nyquist filter is not going to realize duo entry encode is not going to realize the combination of these two is known as duo entry conversion filter it's a cosine filter it's a realizable filter and the bandwidth needed will be only fb by 2 hertz so encoder plus nyquist filter that's a duo entry conversion filter that output is going to be transmitted through a communication channel and i just written here assume that input binary data format is not written to zero polar format with amplitude plus minus 1 volt so it may be okay for uh, examination point of view. 
that input may be given in terms of ones and zeros. So this ones and zeros should be converted to plus one voltage and minus one voltage. Plus one representing one and minus one voltage representing zero. So the input voltages are plus minus one volt and interval of each bit is TV second. That is why the equation for duovendry encoder output is CK is equal to BK plus BK minus one. It's a voltage addition. One plus one, two volt, minus one plus minus one, minus two voltage, plus one and minus one output voltage will be zero. Due to this particular equation, the characteristic polynomial of duovendry encoder is written as one plus D. Meaning of this one is percent bit plus delayed bit. That is 1 plus D. So the characteristic polynomial is 1 plus D. Meaning of that is the system is dual entry system. 1 plus D. That is percent bit plus delayed bit. So I am showing an example here. Input data bits are 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And this 0 and 1 are going to be represented in terms of plus 1 voltage and minus 1 voltage. So 0, 0, that is minus 1, minus 1. Next to 1, 0, 1, minus 1. Next to 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, minus 1. These are the input voltage levels. And these voltages are going to be added with the previous voltage. So minus 1 should be added with the previous voltage. But we don't have the previous voltage. So that should be assumed. And one condition here is, if it is minus 1, the assumed voltage should be always minus 1. If it is plus 1, the assumed voltage should be plus 1. That means initially, the output voltage should not be 0. It should be plus 2 voltage or minus 2 voltage. Then only our decoder is able to decode the output. That I will explain when we are studying the decoding system. So the input voltages are minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. These are the voltage representation of 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Next, the voltage is assumed that is minus 1. The reason is first input voltage is minus 1. That is why BK minus 1 is also minus 1. Otherwise, only the delayed bit. First bit, here writing a second bit. Second bit, writing a third bit. Like this, one bit delay. So the last bit, the delay is not needed because we need only 8 output voltages. And the CK is the addition of minus 1 and minus 1. Minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2. 1 plus minus 1 is 0 voltage. It's a voltage addition. The output will be minus 2, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0. This is a duo entry encoder output. This duo entry encoder output is represented in terms of pulses here. Minus 2, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, plus 2 and 0. So it's a C1, C2, C3, etc., C7. There are seven input bits and seven output pulses also. And I just explained now how the name came. That is a dual bend system is also known as correlative coding. Here we can see two adjacent dual bend pulses contain one common input bit. That means I just show from the previous one you can see that output C1 is generated from B1 and B0. And C2 is generated from B2 and B1. So we can see between C1 and C2, there is a common bit. That common bit is B1. That is a B1 is common between C1 and C2. Similarly, B2 will be common between C2 and C3. This will continue. So that is an indication adjacent pulses are always correlated. Because C1 and C2, C1 and C2 contain a common bit B1. So C1 and C2 are related. Next, C2 and C3 contain a common bit that is B2. So C2 and C3 are related. This relation will continue. That is why the code is known as correlative code. Because that adjacent pulses are always correlated. Due to that correlation existing, the code is known as correlative code. Now I will explain how the decoding can be done from dual boundary output. The input is a dual boundary signal. That's whatever be the pulses we generated at the transmitting set. That is given the switch. It's a sampling switch. Switch is going to be closed at every bit interval. Whatever be the voltage, that voltage will be given to decision device. The function of the decision device is to make a decision either 1 or 0 based on the algorithm written here. If the input voltage is without any noise, the possible input voltage is plus 2 voltage, minus 2 voltage or 0 voltage. If the input voltage is plus 2 voltage, output is 1. The reason for that one is plus 2 can be obtained only from addition of 1 and 1. That means if the present voltage is 1 and the previous voltage is 1, then only output voltage will be 2. That is why if the received voltage is 2 voltage, we can make a decision about the original transmitted bit was 1. Similarly, minus 2 voltage, output will be 0 because minus 2 can be generated from only minus 1 and minus 1. So present bit is 0, previous bit was also 0, then only the output voltage will be minus 2. 
So if the receiver receiving minus 2 voltage, the output distance will be 0. But the difficulty will come if the received voltage will be 0. Because 0 can be obtained from present bit 1, previous bit minus 1 or present bit minus 1, previous bit 1. For both cases, output will be 0. That is why the direct decision is not possible. If the output voltage will be 0, then output bit will be the complement of the previous data bit. The reason for that one is the present bit and the previous bits are opposite, that is complement to each other. Then only output voltage will be 0. And that is the technique I am going to implement here. That is the decoding is going to be done based on this algorithm. The received voltages are minus 2, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, plus 2, 0. These voltages we got from the previous slide. And according to our algorithm, if it is minus 2, output voltage will be 0, output bit will be 0, minus 2, output bit will be 0, and if it is plus 2, output bit will be 1. All this is a direct decision. Only if the voltage will be 0, then we should know the previous bit. The previous bit is 0, that is the present bit is 1. Next, received voltage will be 0, so we should know the previous bit. Previous bit is 1, so the present bit will be the complement of that, that is 0. So here, finally, the decision will be like this, minus 2, 0, minus 2, 0, next to 0, so complement of 0 is 1. Next, again 0, complement of 1 is 0. Next, again 0, complement of 0 is 1. Next, 2, it's a direct decision, it is 1. Next, to 0 voltage, complement of previous bit, that is 0. This is exactly the same as the original bits. So, using this algorithm, original bits can be regenerated at the output side. And we can see there are some disadvantages for this particular decoding algorithm. I am just showing one example here. Assume that amplitude of second received pulse is 0 voltage. So, instead of previously it was minus 2 voltage. So, instead of minus 2 voltage, if you received 0 voltage, maybe due to some noise addition, then minus 2 is received as 0 voltage. If it is received as 0 voltage, now our decision will be like this. Minus 2, first decision 0. But next received voltage is 0. So, that is why complement of previous 0, that is 1. Next again 0. So, complement of 1 is 0. Next again 0, complement of 0 is 1. Next again 0, complement of 1 is 0. Next 2 voltage is a direct decision. Next 0 voltage, complement of 1 is 0. We can see here, due to this error, there is an error at the output side and this error is going to propagate. The reason is, next 3 decisions are based on this bit. So, once error occurring and after that error bit, if zeros are following like this, if zeros are following, then error is going to propagate. This is known as error propagation in duo entry system. So, for uh, for obtaining that error propagation, actually there is a requirement, wherever error occurring, okay, after that some zeros should follow. And when, whenever zeros are following, then only the decision is going to make based on the previous bit. Error propagation, there is one disadvantage. There is another disadvantage we can see here is, if these voltages are inverted, that is known as polarity inversion. And if minus 2 is inverted, means it will be plus 2 voltage, but the distance will be then 1. If this plus 2 is received as minus 2, the distance will be 0. That is all our decisions are going to be inverted. That is known as polarity inversion error. So, both are written here, error propagation and polarity inversion error. And these two errors can be avoided using a differential encoder before dual entry encoder. This differential encoder is known as precoder because it is before dual entry system. That is why it is known as a precoder. So, if you are using precoder before dual entry encoder system, two advantages we are able to get compared to dual entry system. One is no polarity inversion error. Second, no error propagation. So, our second system is dual entry signaling with precoder. So, the same system, one extra differential encoder is used to avoid error propagation and polarity inversion error. So, this consists of a uh, modulo to adder, that is XOR system and delay system. So, input is BK, that BK we can consider it is a 1s and zeros. This BK and the delayed output, that is AK minus 1. So, that is these two bits are going to XOR, that is why the precoder equation is AK is equal to BK XOR AK minus 1, XOR of these two bits. BK and AK minus 1 are going to XOR, that XOR output will be the AK bit. And for here, for that uh, AK minus 1, there is no restriction, like the previous case, any bit can be taken 1 or 0, irrespective of the input bit is 1 or 0. Any, in, any input can be taken as initially 
for generating the first AK output. Function of NRS of polar generator is to generate plus 1 voltage or minus 1 voltage when the input bits are 1s and zeros. Here we are taking 1 and 1, then output will be 0. If it is 0 and 0, output will be 0. If it is 1 and 0, output, will be, output bit will be 1. So here AK will be 1 or 0. But we know for a voltage addition here, we need the voltages in terms of plus 1 voltage and minus 1 voltage. That is why there is an NRS of polar generator. The function of NRS of polar generator is to convert that logic levels into voltage levels that is plus 1 voltage or minus 1 voltage with respect to the input bits are 1 or 0. So exactly like the previous cases the voltage addition is going to be done here. So the output voltage will be plus 2 voltage or minus 2 voltage or 0 voltage that is passing through Nyquist filter for obtaining the final output. So here there are two equations one is AK is equal to BK XOR AK minus 1. So that is a precoder output. Next, dual entry encoder output is a voltage addition that is CK is equal to AK plus AK minus 1. Here, voltage addition like a 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 volt. Here, 1 XOR 1, 1 XOR 1 is equal to 0. Here, XOR result and here, voltage addition. Here, voltages are same, output will be plus or minus 2 voltage. Here, bits are same, output will be 0. So I am showing an example. Input binary data, the same previous uh, example, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. First, uh, that's, uh, I just written again the BK here, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Next, uh, we should know AK minus 1 for generating AK. And we don't know what is AK minus 1. That is why uh, 1 bit is assumed here. So, assumed bit will be 0. So, it can be taken as 0 or 1. There is no restriction like a dual entry system without precoder. Here, any bit can be taken. Still, Finally, you are going to get the correct answer. So, 0 XOR 0 output will be 0. This 0 is delayed here. The reason is this line is AK and second line is AK minus 1. So, second line is the delayed version of third line. So, this 0 is delayed here and these two zeros are XORing. Output is 0. This 0 is delayed. 1 XOR 0 output is 1. 1 delayed. 1 XOR 0 1. 1 here. 1 1 XOR 0. 0 delayed here. 1 0 output is 1 that one is delayed here 0 XOR 1 output is 1. So here we got AK and second line is AK minus 1. This AK and AK minus 1 are represented in terms of voltage level here just to go for that voltage addition. AK 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 that is written here minus 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 1 1. Next AK minus 1 AK minus 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Voltage representation minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So, this is a voltage representation of this AK. And last line is a voltage representation of AK minus 1. Now, directly voltage addition. Minus 1 plus minus 1, minus 2 voltage. Minus 1 plus minus 1, minus 2. 1 plus minus 1, 0. 1 plus 1, 2. Minus 1 plus 1, 0. 1 plus minus 1, 0. 1 plus 1, 2. And that is represented in terms of voltage level, plus 2 voltage, minus 2 voltage or 0 voltage. This is the output of dual entry encoder with precoder. Now we will study how the decoding can be implemented from dual entry output with precoder. Again, the decoder system looks same, dual entry input, sampling switch, switch is going to be closed at every dB second, that be the output, that output is written as CK, that is given to decision device. The function of the decision device is to make a decision either 1 or 0 based on the algorithm now we are going to study. For obtaining that algorithm, first I will take precoder output AK is equal to that we used at the transmitting set that is encoding set AK is equal to BK XOR AK minus 1. This is a precoder equation. From this precoder equation we can say BK is equal to AK XOR AK minus 1. This is a property of XOR. According to the property of XOR, a x or b is equal to c then b x or c is equal to a or a x or c is equal to b so that property is used here using that property from first equation we are written b k is equal to a k x or a k minus 1 so we have the first equation needed for getting decoding algorithm second equation is dual entry output that is directly used in the transmitting set same equation Dual entry output CK is equal to AK plus AK minus 1. 
these two equations will help us to make the decision algorithm. So, BK is equal to AK, X or AK minus 1, CK is equal to AK plus AK minus 1. The voltage we are going to get in the output side is CK. From the CK, we should be able to make the decision about BK. Case 1. That is, I will go for two cases. This AK and AK minus 1 are not same or same. First case, AK and AK minus 1 are not same. So, these two voltages are not same. If two voltages are not same, meaning of that is, it may be like this, 1, minus 1, or minus 1, 1. Both cases, the voltage addition will be 0 voltage. And once it is 0 voltage, we will verify what will be the AK output. AK is equal to BK XOR, sorry, BK, BK is equal to AK XOR AK minus 1. If AK and AK minus 1 are not same, not same means 1 XOR 0 is equal to 1 or 0 XOR 1 is equal to 1. So, bits are not same, output outputs bit will be 1, so that 1 is written here. So, this is an indication whenever the received voltage CK is equal to 0 voltage, output bit will be 1. I just repeat, from this equation, if the voltages are not same, 1 plus minus 1, voltage voltages are not same, the CK voltage will be 0, that is written here, CK is equal to 0. But at the same time, if AK and AK minus 1 are not same, then XOR Z will be 1, that is written here, BK is equal to 1. So, case 1 shows that if the received voltage is 0 voltage, output decision has to be 1. Similarly, we will go for the second case, that is AK and AK minus 1 are same. If AK and AK minus 1 are same, according to equation number 2, 1 plus 1 is equal to plus 2 voltage or minus 1 plus minus 1, that is minus 2 voltage. That is why it is written here, CK is equal to plus or minus 2 voltage. But according to equation number 1, if AK and AK minus 1 are same, that is 1 XOR 1 or 0 XOR 0, the answer will be 0. That is written here, BK is equal to 0. From this, we are able to say, finally, if CK is equal to 0 voltage, output has to be 1. If CK is equal to plus 2 voltage or minus 2 voltage, output will be 0. So, I just apply this decision algorithm in our received signal. That is written, the algorithm is written here. If CK is equal to 0 volt, output bit is 1. If it is plus 2 voltage or minus 2 voltage, output bit is 0. So, our CK is written here, minus 2, minus 2, 0, 2, 0, 0, 2. Using this algorithm, minus 2, output, output bit is 0, minus 2, output is 0, 0, output is 1, 2, output is 0, for 0, 0, output is 1, 1. 2, 0. And that is exactly the same as the original bits. Here there are two advantages. One advantage is there is no polarity inversion error and second advantage is no error propagation. The reason there is no error propagation, we are not making any decision based on previous bit. Like uh, each decision is an independent decision. Each decision is independent. It is not based on the previous bit. And no polarity inversion error, the reason is if these voltages are inverted, that is it will become plus 2, plus 2, minus 2, minus 2, but still the output remains same because we are making same decision against the plus 2 voltage or minus 2 voltage. So, here this, this shows that with the, pre, uh, with the precoder system, the door and the signals can be decoded at the receiving side without error propagation and without polarity inversion error. Now, we will study what is the transfer function of door and the conversion filter. That means from that transfer function, we are able to get how much bandwidth is needed for transmission door of entry signal and it is a realizable filter or not. So, the analysis of this door of entry system is going to be done here. First part is tra transfer function door of entry encoder. So, this is door of entry encoder. Input is BK, then output, output bit will be BK plus BK minus 1. So, that is a basic function door of entry system. Output is present pulse plus previous pulse voltage addition. So, if input is BK, output is BK plus BK minus 1. So, I am taking the Fourier transform of BK. Let BK Fourier transform B of F. BK minus 1 Fourier transform B of F into E raised to minus J 2 pi F T B. That is a time shifting property. BK minus 1 that is B of T minus T B. So, that is B of F into E raised to minus J 2 pi F T B. Transfer function of a system can be determine from output Fourier transform and input Fourier transform. So, our transfer function of the system is equal to output Fourier transform upon input Fourier transform. 
and output signal is BK plus BK minus 1 and the Fourier transform of this is B of F plus B of F into E raised to minus J2 pi FTV. Input signal is BK and this Fourier transform is B of F. After division, you can see this B of F, B of F, B of F cancel. So, final answer is 1 plus E raised to minus J2 pi FTV. This 1 plus E raised to minus J2 pi FTV can be written in terms of cos because 1 is equal to e raised to j theta into e raised to minus j theta. e raised to j theta into e raised to minus j theta. So, e raised to j pi f t b into e raised to minus j pi f t b. Multiplication of these two will be 1. e raised to minus j theta into e raised to minus j theta will be e raised to minus j 2 theta. <coughs> that is written here. e raised to j pi f t b into e raised to j pi f t b will be e raised to j 2 pi f t b. For converting this one into cos, e raised to j theta plus e raised to minus j theta divided by 2. So, for compensating that divided by 2, multiplied by 2 here. So, it is 2 cos pi f t b into e raised to minus j pi f t b. The magnitude part of this transfer function is 2 cos pi f t b. Modulus of e raised to minus j pi f t b will be 1. So, this is the magnitude part. Second, Nyquist filter. Nyquist filter transfer function is Tb from minus Fb by 2 to plus Fb by 2 and is equal to 0 elsewhere. It is a brick wall filter that is it is a constant amplitude from minus Fb by 2 to plus Fb by 2. That is why this is not a realizable filter. Third one is Dovendry conversion filter. Dovendry conversion filter is a cascade filter of Dovendry filter and Nyquist filter that is why HDF is equal to H1F into H2F. If two systems are cascaded, the combined transfer function is a product of individual transfer function. So, HDF is equal to first transfer function into second transfer function. HDF is equal to first transfer function is written here. Second transfer function is TB and the frequency range minus FB by 2 to plus FB by 2. And the magnitude of this transfer function is written here 2 TB cos by FTB. I just representing that transfer function here from minus fb by 2 to plus fb by 2 in the previous transfer function when you're substituting f is equal to 0 it will be cos 0 cos 0 is equal to 1 1 into 2 tb that is what f is equal to 0 it will be 2 tb when you're substituting f is equal to fb by 2 it will become cos 2 pi uh, cos pi so that's it will be 0 so from minus fb by 2 to plus fb by 2 this will be the transfer function and we can see this is a realizable transfer function. There is no sharp cutoff and the bandwidth is only Fb by 2. So, that is the return here. Duobendry bandwidth is Fb by 2 hertz. Duobendry filter is a realizable filter because there is no sharp cutoff and maximum response seconds is 0 frequency. That may be a disadvantage in some application 